there's always a silver lining being on probation getting stabbed and that's when i saw my blood flowing down the gravel and i was like oh my god this needs a hospital or i'm gonna die i believe that violence was the answer to all things i made a lot of mistakes with that kind of idea at eight years old i became the victim of sexual abuse it's something i lived through and i'm not gonna let it define me anymore do you have any input for anyone who's been through things that you've been through in life if it wasn't for the people in my life i would i don't know where i'd be we, we need family My, my first passion in life was um, reptiles. I loved animals. So I, I, I became obsessed. I was constantly out catching lizards. And um, we, my grandmother at the time was an in-home care provider. And one of the people she was providing home care for was, uh, was a reptile vet. And, and uh, he lived up in Clear Lake. And my, my, my mom would take me up there and drop me off there for the summer. And I got to do all kinds of cool stuff, like working with animals. But that's also where... My, the beginning of all of my trouble started. So the individual that she left me with was uh, not a good person. At eight years old, um, I became the victim of sexual abuse and it went on from eight to nine to 10, 11 and 12. And that's about 12 is when he finally got caught. And uh, that was that was the beginning of all my, my difficulties. I've studied uh, like the pathology of like serial killers because that was something I was interested in for a while. And I, like, there's seven markers, and I had like five of the seven, like absent parent, growing up poor, uh, sexual abuse. I believe that when you keep secrets, those secrets kind of keep you. And the, the more you talk about them, like the talking about me being molested, the more the more I've talked about it, the less power it's had over me and the more I've been able to like let it go. One of, one of the things that, that was eye-opening to me is that at nine years old, I was like, I was doing weird things like hurting little animals. And I remember the last time I did it, it... I, when it, when this when I get in this mode, it was like I was sitting back seat in my head watching something else take over, and it was a very like like energy energized feeling, like I was attached to a power grid kind of thing. And when I like got back in control of myself, I just sat back and cried and cried and cried and cried and cried, and and I thought to myself at like nine years old, like this is out of control. I cannot entertain this anymore. This is going to be bad. So I spent every moment from that day forward trying to help every little animal I could. I've I've helped so I've 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 had so many pets and and uh, I've helped every every stray animal I can. I've I've just tried to help all of them as a way to like atone for what I've done and and I, I just think the animals are innocent, just like children. They are innocent. They, when you hurt that, that's that's true evil, and that's that should just shouldn't be. Well, you were probably channeling rage, man. Well, oh, right. and I I had a lot of rage through yeah. my childhood. I was very much an angry person. I. I believe that that violence was the answer to all things. And and I, I made a lot of mistakes with that kind of idea. Mm -hmm. At 12, dude, dude got caught. So so when he got caught, I was questioned by like the police and all that. And um, I, I lied and I was like, no, it didn't happen. And when my family found out that it was a possibility, um, a family friend of ours who was, uh, what would you say? Like not a very... um. Not a very good person. She's made a lot of bad decisions, but she heard that it was even a potential and she knew where he was incarcerated and called in a favor and the dude was thrown from the third tier at San Quentin and he like spent the rest of his life in a wheelchair. Wow. And uh, How did that feel when you found um, out? So w I didn't find out until about six years later and uh, fast forward when I was 28, I met this girl who I was seeing and uh, I was telling her this story and she was like, no way. Like, I know somebody who, I know somebody who actually did that, threw somebody off the tier in San Quentin and come to find out that she just happened to know the man who who did, he got 15 more years because for doing that too. So like, he did that for me and didn't even know who I was. He just heard a kid was hurt. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to meet the individual. He had passed away about six months before I met her. But like, everything comes full circle. Everything is related. Everything's, it's all cyclical. I have heard that kids, feel guilt or shame and so they lied do you remember why you lied and said it didn't happen were you afraid uh, it was shame it was absolutely shame uh -huh. and it, and I, I didn't want my mom it was more for my mom i didn't want my mom to feel bad and yeah it was i i stuffed that down way deep way deep and it and it it was the underlying reason for me making all the dumb decisions i made as a kid and i i spent a lot of time in juvenile hall from the age of 12 to 18 i spent like Four and a half years, I think, in total. And so I was on probation for like seven, six, seven years, and 
most of that was in juvie or four in and a half home. years in juvie as a teen. Yeah, well, That's yeah, whole from, the, from the age of Damn. twelve to to like almost eighteen and a half. I spent a lot of time. That, that's also including like group homes and stuff. They took, um, I, I gave a dirty test for cannabis and they, they put me in juvie for nine months. Can you believe that? I got Shit, out. It's legal I, now. I, you, right. You, oh my God. I got out and I smoked again like a week later and they put me in for nine more months. I was walking with the, on my outpatient program, we were walking by this, by this park and, uh, I smelled weed and then I looked and I could see these plants sticking up over the neighbor's backyard, over the fence. Right. And I, they were humongous. And I'd, to the lady who those plants those were, I, I tip my hat to you as a grower <laughs> because I'm still trying to figure out how you did that. Um, but uh, my uncle, when he, I told him, he was like, you need to go steal those. And I was like, uh, sure, why not? And um, being the little misbent youth I was, I I was like, sure. And every morning he'd come into my room be like, did you get those plants? I'm like, no. He's like, you're a disappointment. And he, <laughs> he would say things like that to me and like that hurt because like, this is the only man in my life I want to like impress in any kind of way. And after like the fifth time he was saying that was I was a disappointment to him. I was like, I'm gonna go get these plants. And uh so I I go to I go to the house and it's about it's about one AM and I know they have a dog in the backyard, so I brought a sandwich because I'm gonna throw it to the other side of the yard. And I was just Smart. gonna reach over and take the tops of the plants because there's no way I'm hopping the fence. I was a skinny little thing. I was not getting over the fence with that. So um I waited how long because I was nervous, and when I finally threw the sandwich over and the dog shut the hell up. Some old lady comes to the back door. The dog goes running with a sandwich. And she's like, what the? F There's someone in the backyard. And oh, I don't know no. what she did, but they had some kind of security system where I heard her like hit a button. And all of a sudden, there's floodlights on the side of the house because I'm in the neighbor's yard. And it, I'm, I'm blinded. I can't see. And I, I hear commotion on the other side of the fence. And I hear something hit the fence. And I look up and I see a silhouette. And I, it looks like he's about to punch me. So I, I put my hand up and I block it. And he hits me and I go running. So I came around the corner covered in blood, and I didn't know I was covered in blood yet. And uh, I, I, I run down a block, over a block, up a block, and then <clears throat> I know they're chasing me because I can, like, hear it. So I, I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Um, I'm wearing a, a, a really thick hoodie, and, like, my hoodie was hella, hella heavy, and, like, something kept getting in my eyes. And I was like, am I sweating that bad? And that, my hand felt funny, and I, I was like, what? So I took my hoodie off, and that's when I see that this, you can see the scar here. Yeah. My hand was cut open and blood's all. Psst, psst, was it psst. an axe or something? There was a knife. It was a knife about this big. He tried to stab me in the head, and I, and I blocked it with my hand, and uh, and I saw blood just squirting out my thumbs like this far back, and and, oh. and I, I right then I got scared, so I, I like I ran to this like driveway right next to me, and there was a truck, and uh, as I run up the driveway, the like a motion light comes on, and I crawled under the truck, and it's a gravel driveway, and the the, the people whose backyard it was, they like. They meet up right in front of the truck. I'm like, you see where that dude went? No, split up. Go that way. Go that way. And said some racist stuff about me being Latino. I don't know how they realized I was Mexican, but but they 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 took off, and that's when I saw my blood flowing down the dry the the gravel, and I was like, oh my god. I was, and I looked at my hand one more time. I was like, this needs a hospital, or I'm gonna die. So I drop I I drop the hoodie under the truck, and I get up and I go. I start to run, and every step I took my legs started feeling colder and then like every oh, step no. felt like my legs were getting chopped off a little bit and then I, I i go black and then i i i woke up to somebody picking me up and then i woke up again to to being set on the ground and i was wearing a wife beater and it was ripped off and wrapped around my hand and then i remember being in the ambulance blacked out again and then i came to in the hospital when they were stapling my hand shut and my little brother was there and he's like you're so stupid like what the hell what the hell? There's always a silver lining. Everything I've ever been through is always a silver lining. Being That's in juvenile awesome. hall, being on probation, getting stabbed. Like I ended up after after I got stabbed and like the, him and his friends, like twenty of his friends, jumped me and like threw me through a door. At, at the, there was a Mervin's in Apple. They shattered the door with my face. Like it was crazy. Uh, after that, I actually met him when I was twenty something. I shook his hand and I said thank you because. Uh, you taught me a lesson that day to keep my grubby fucking hands to myself. <laughs> were you able to see, and you don't have to answer, but were you able to see a silver lining to being molested? So I I see that now, yes. Um, yeah, words the wrong question. Do you see that now? Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely do because I, like, like I said, it's my, I, I think it's my purpose here to teach people and um, I, I'm an anomaly in terms of how I handle that. I've, I've, done no therapy for it i like no official therapy only my psychedelic treatments and my talking to my friends and uh 
there's the as much as I've opened up about like here, I've only shared that much with a few people, and um, and that's every time I talk about it, the less power it has over me. And the first the first million times I spoke on it, it was it still kind of hurt and it, it made me feel shame and it made me feel like kind of nauseous. But now, now the more I talk about it, the better I feel because I'm letting, I'm releasing that. I don't need to hold on to it. It doesn't define me. It's not who I am. It's not, it's just where I've been. It's something I lived through and it's, I'm not going to let it define me anymore. Fast forward to when I'm in my foster mom's house, um, a counselor who I'm not going to name just cause I don't want to get him in trouble, but he was at the rehab I was at and he saw me in computer class because I was ahead of everybody else. So like I just had free time to either mess around with Photoshop or internet. He saw me researching Satanism and he like, kind of snuck up on me. He's like, what are you looking? I was like, nothing. He's like, he's like, you're looking in the wrong place. And he, he, he told me about a book called Satan Seller by Mike Rorick. I think it was. And he's like, you need to, you want to, you want to find the path, read this book. So I, I read that book and um, I read it and I come to him and I was like, dude, that was crazy. And he's like, now, you need to know it was all bullshit. Like I lied about everything. I was like, what? Then why'd you have me read that? He's like, cause that's, I want to see if you would, if you would listen enough to read it. And then he, he, he started giving me better, um, resources. I was a dedicated Satanist and I was spewing the rhetoric everywhere from about, about 14. No, but no, it's 15 to probably two years ago. So you left Satanism first and then found God. Tell me about. So I, I, I wouldn't say. Why like did the, you leave? The Constitution talks about our God given it, 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 inalienable, inalienable rights to, to the pursuit of happiness and, and freedom. And for some reason or another, when I was reading those things, like, and I read that God given and, and the, the fact that, that, I, that we are, we are divine entities, like that it my my spirit vibrated at a better frequency and it synchronized and it harmonized uh -huh. and like my best friend ben he grew up very christian very christian and we've never had a fight or an argument and we 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 were very opposing views in faith and like we could we discussed it on many occasions and never got upset with each other and i i called him first i was like on the verge of tears i'm like bro i i get it now and he's, he's like the hell are you talking about it i explained it to him he's like dude this is the greatest conversation we've ever had man like you're finally getting it okay so the exit from satanism what mm. is your faith what does it look like today your relationship with god um i've through my psychedelic experiences i've come to understand that no two people's experience are the same like it's there's a certain level of individuality that comes with our relationship with god i i don't like organized religion because the fear mongering first off and the and like, like the, it's, you don't have to go to church to find God. God has nothing to do with church. God is here. We are, I like to envision God as like a, a cosmic bucket of water. And we are all individual droplets of that bucket of water experiencing oneself subjectively. So like, with that being said, being cruel to people in a long enough timeline, you're just being cruel to yourself. There's no, there's no need for any of that. You disparaging people, you're just being disparaging yourself. It's, we are all connected. Do you have any input for anyone who's been through things that you've been through in life that haven't told anyone and maybe don't realize that there's freedom and getting help for that. If you, if, if you have, if, if there's something you're dealing with, talk about it, don't keep it. Don't, it's not, it's, it happened to you. It doesn't mean it's yours. It doesn't mean it is you. It's just something that happened. And the more we talk about it, the more fearless we are about that, the more we give other people around us the permission to be fearless and to, to have the courage to speak up on these things because it's we we have to pick the person at our side up we have to we have to pick our fellow people up we we all we got to pick everybody up we got to encourage people to be better we got got to stop hating if it wasn't for the people in my life i would i don't know where i'd be we we need people we need we we need family and uh i see a lot of people who are disconnected from their family these days and Not I, a good place to I, no wonder everything is broken like but I, I came from a home with only my mother, and like I, I believe that the 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 mother's the name of God on the lips and hearts of all children, and like it's, I feel bad for anybody who doesn't have have their mom in their life. Like I pity the fool Wayne mom's boy. Like mm -hmm. I love my mom, and 
love love and connection that's what that's where it's really at thanks for watching hope you guys enjoyed that please leave a comment and subscribe it really helps grow the channel so we can continue to get great guests in the meantime check out these two videos right here thank you